So if you haven't seen them before, there are some things that people create called satisfying looping animations. And so I thought it would be really cool to make a Blender tutorial series on how to create one of these satisfying looping animations. So in this tutorial series, we're going to be creating this exact animation in Blender. So yeah, that's the animation. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this exact animation here of this hot dog factory. So we're going to be creating everything and then we're going to be animating the hot dog factory. So we'll have like the hot dog bun move on the conveyor belt and then the robot arm will like place the hot dog. And then I guess the really satisfying part of this animation is watching the mustard being squeezed out onto the hot dog. And if you'd like to watch a 10 minute version of this looping animation, I uploaded a 10 minute version of this on my YouTube channel. I'll have a card right up there on the screen and also the link in the video description. And if you'd like to see more of these type of tutorials where I create these satisfying looping animations, definitely let me know in the comments. And if I get enough requests, maybe I will make some more of these tutorials. And it is a pretty big process to create this looping animation. So I decided to split this tutorial up into three different parts. So each part will be a little bit shorter and easier to follow. Now, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, I am trying to create Blender tutorials and Blender content for a living. So if you'd like to help support me, you can purchase the finished tutorial files on my Gumroad store and you can also get the finished tutorial files if you join my Patreon. And if you'd like to check out my Gumroad store and Patreon page, those are great ways to help support me and my YouTube channel. And one more thing before we start, I want to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. On Sketchfab, you can upload, buy, and sell 3D models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can upload and preview your own 3D models models in your browser. Sketchfab also has a 3D model store where you can purchase 3D models and assets. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. Alright, so real quick, I'm going to go over all of the online assets that I will be using to create this. Um, so the first one here is this Machine Shop 02 HDRI, and this is from polyhaven.com. So I'll be using this to get some nice realistic lighting for our scene. So I'll have all the links in the video description to the resources that I'm going to be using online, and they're all free. So for this HDRI, I'm going to be downloading the 1K version and the HDR version, and then I will just download that. Now I will also be downloading six free sound effects from a website called freesound.org. So the first one that I'll be downloading here is this bicycle sound effect, and we'll be using this for the sound effect of the conveyor belts in our looping animation. And the second sound effects is this squishy oobleck goo, again another free sound effect, and we'll be using this when the mustard is being put on the hot dog. And then I'm also going to be using this robot arm drill machine sound effect, and we'll be using this for the robot arms. And I'll also be downloading another slimy sound effect to add when the mustard is being put on the hot dog. And I'll also be downloading this robotic sounds sound effect and we'll be adding this again for the robot's arms. And then also this humming sound effect, we're going to be using this one in the background just to make it sound like it's some sort of machinery or factory. And all of these sound effects are licensed under the Creative Commons Zero License, which is super awesome. And I also want to give a huge thanks to the creators of these sound effects. All right, so just open a new scene in Blender and let's get started. So if you want to see the screencast keys that I'll be pressing, I'm going to have my screencast keys right down there in the corner so you can see what buttons I am pressing. Now I am going to be using the Cycles render engine for this tutorial because I do want my animation to look pretty realistic and Cycles is a much more realistic rendering engine, but you could totally use Eevee if you want to. Um, right up here on the screen, I'll show a render of Eevee and and then the other one was in cycles, but here it is in Eevee. As you can see, it does look pretty good in Eevee. So if you don't have that fast of a computer and if you want your render times to be faster, you could totally use Eevee, but I will be using cycles. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected. And I'm now gonna press X to delete and we are going to delete everything because we can't use the default cube. We have to add a new one. So we're gonna press Shift A and we are going to add another cube. You have to delete everything and then add a new cube because you can't use the default cube. 
So I'm now going to tap into edit mode and I want to scale this way out to make the conveyor belt. So I'm going to press S to scale and then I'm going to hit the X button to scale it on the X axis. And I'm going to scale it out really, really big. I'm actually just going to move my mouse and scale it out really, really big. I know that that is very, very big and we don't really need it to be that big, but I do want to make the conveyor belt very, very long so that it doesn't mess up the lighting. Because if you just use just the right amount of conveyor belt that you're going to need to work in the scene, then the lighting can actually get a bit messed up and the lighting can look a bit different from the start frame and the end frame. So I'm just going to scale this up really big on the x-axis so we basically have this really long stretched out cube. And then what I'm also going to do is press 3 on the top of my keyboard or you can also click right here to go to the face select. And I'm going to select this face right here and I'll press x to delete and we want to delete the faces. And then also I'm going to select this face. Let's press x to delete. I want to delete the faces. And then let's navigate right over here and then I'm going to select this face and I will delete the faces as well because we're only going to need these top three parts of the conveyor belt we're not going to see the other parts all right so that is looking good so we can now tab back into object mode let's now add a camera so i'm going to press shift a let's go down here and we're going to add a camera and then what we can do is we can navigate our view to where we want the camera to be so i'm going to zoom in here to the center and i want to place the camera about here i'm now going to press Control alt numpad zero and Control alt numpad pad zero is going to hop the camera to where we are in the 3d space and then i want to render this as a square image so i'm going to click right over here on the output properties i'm going to change this to a square image so you could use really whatever resolution you want but i'm going to be using a resolution of 2560 by 2560 so this is a pretty high quality image it is pretty large um, you don't have to make it this big if you don't want to you could instead just do like 1080 by 1080 or 1920 by 1920. Um, really, it's up to you whatever you want to do. I'm going to do a pretty large image because I do want this to look pretty nice. But if the resolution is bigger, it is going to take longer to render. All right, let's save our Blender file. So I'm going to click right up here on File and then I'll click on Save As. And I'm going to save this as Hot Dog Loop Tutorial Blend. I'll just save this in a folder on my computer and I will just save that. And then as you're working on the project, you can just press Control S and that is going to save the blender file all right now i'm going to select the camera and then i'll press the zero key on the numpad to go in and out of the camera now because we have the camera selected now i'm going to click right over here on the object data properties that's going to go to the camera settings and on the focal length here i'm going to change this to 100 just because i want the focal length to be a little bit bigger so everything looks a little bit more flat so i'm going to change it to 100 and you can see it kind of zooms in and makes everything look a bit more flat and i think it looks pretty nice for this looping animation so now i I do also want to just adjust the camera a little bit more so I'm going to press G to grab and that's going to move the camera around I can also double tap the R key and then hold down the shift key after I double tap the R key that's going to make my movements more sensitive and double tapping the R key is going to turn on the trackball rotation and I can just kind of rotate this down a little bit and then I can press G to grab maybe bring it up a little bit and then I'll press G again to grab and then I'm going to tap the Z key twice and that way it'll move in and out so it's going to move forward and backwards and I'll just bring it over to about there maybe move it down a little bit we can adjust the camera a little bit later on if we want to but the camera should be pretty close to where we want it and then I'll just double tap the R key again to do the trackball rotation and make it so it's looking down a little bit all right so something like that is pretty good so you can see here's the conveyor belt and here's where the hot dogs are going to be or the hot dog buns and then the conveyor belt the side of the conveyor belt just kind of comes down like that now you can see that this conveyor belt looks really sharp on the edges and so I want to give it a bevel modifier to smooth it out so i'm going to select this object and then i'll click right over here on the modifier properties and let's click on add modifier and i'm going to add the bevel modifier so i'm now going to turn these segments up and i'll turn these segments up to five and then i'm also going to bring this amount down so what you can do is you can click and drag on this value and then you can hold down the shift key as you're dragging and that is going to make the movements more sensitive so i'll just make that pretty small just so that there's a little bit of a curve right there um, kind of a bevel right there on the side and then with this object selected using the object context menu I'm going to shade this object smooth. Now I do want to have another conveyor belt a little bit farther away and so this front one is going to have the hot dog buns and then the actual hot dogs are going to be on this other conveyor belt and then as you saw in the animation that I showed at the beginning of the video the robot arm is going to grab the hot dog and stick it into the bun. So I'm just going to select this cube right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate 
and I'm going to bring this over on the Y axis and just click to place that. So I can press seven on the numpad for top view and we can get that closer aligned. So from the very center, I want it to be about three grids apart. So if I press the Z key, move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe, you can see here's the center. So one, two, three grids is right there. So I'm going to bring it right over there. Now I also want to make it a bit thinner. So I'm going to tab in edit mode on this object and then double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected. I'm now going to press S to scale and I'm going to scale it on the Y axis and I'm just going to make it a little bit thinner. So it's just a little bit bigger than one grid and I'll click to place that. And then I can tab back into object mode and I'll press G to grab and we're going to bring it over on the Y axis just like that. All right, so that is looking very good. So you can see one, two, three grids long and then there is that there. So if I press seven to go to top view, you can see there's the first one and then there is the second one and that's looking very nice. Let's press control S again to save. So now let's add a plane and we're gonna put the plane in the background. So I'm gonna press Shift A, let's go to Mesh and we're going to add a plane. I'll press G to grab, we're gonna bring that down. Let's also press seven on the numpad and that is going to take me to the top view. And specifically, I want this to be about 11 grids out. So I'm just gonna move over here and then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, nine, 10, 11. So I want it to be right about here on this one. It doesn't have to be exact, but if you wanna get it pretty close to mine, then from the center here, you can count out to 11 grids and I'm gonna put it right here. So I'm gonna press R to rotate and I'm gonna rotate this on the X axis and I'll type in nine, zero and enter to rotate it by 90 degrees. So it's 11 grids out and then we're gonna bring it up. And then I'll also press S to scale and we are going to scale it pretty big to about there. And then I'll press zero on the numpad to go to the camera view. And then I'll press G to grab. We're gonna bring this over on the X axis and I can also press S to scale. We can scale that down and I can press Press G and Z, so G to grab and Z on the Z axis, we can bring that down because I don't need it to be quite that big and I can also scale it down a little bit more. All right, so something like that is much better. So we now have that backdrop there in the background. And then right back here in the background, I do wanna add like a little shelf and then we're gonna add some things in the background, like some mustard and some ketchup and things. So what I'm gonna do is select this right here, this object here, and I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it over on the Y axis. So hit Y and we are going to bring that over right there. And we're gonna make it so it goes through the wall there. Then I can press G to grab and we're going to bring it down a little bit on the Z axis so it's a little bit farther down and I'll also press G to grab and we're going to bring it on the Y axis and bring that over a little bit. So if you go into the camera view you can see there should be like a little shelf there. I'm also going to select this and press G and Z and move it down a little bit and then I do want to bring it out a little bit just bring it a little bit closer to the camera so I'll press G to grab and we'll bring it out on the Y axis like that. So now we have this little shelf back here um, maybe make it a little bit longer out and then we can add some things onto this um, later at the end of the tutorial. So just press control S again to save. So we're now going to be creating those metal pieces that the hot dogs are going to sit on. So I'm going to press shift C and shift C will center that 3D cursor in the very center of our scene. So I'm now going to press shift A and I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to add a cylinder. And then right after you add the cylinder right there on the add cylinder settings you can just open this up and make sure that the vertices is set to 32. It is on default, so it should be set to 32. I'm now going to press G to grab, and I'm going to bring it up on the Z axis, and we'll just bring it up like that. So I'm now going to tap into edit mode, and then I'll press R to rotate, and I'm going to rotate this on the X axis, and I can type in 9, 0, and enter to rotate that over by 90 degrees. And then I also want to press R to rotate. We're going to rotate it on the Z axis, and I'll type in 9, 0, and enter. I'll press S to scale, and we're going to scale that down on the x-axis and I'm going to make it much smaller to about there. So now let's press 3 on the numpad and that is going to take us to the side view and I'm going to press A to deselect everything. I'm now going to press Z, hold down the Z key, move my mouse over to go into wireframe and let go and we are now in the wireframe view. I'm now going to press B for the box select and I'm going to box select all of these vertices right here and then I'll press X to delete and we want to delete the vertices. So I'll press Z, move my mouse over to go into the solid view and then move up here. So I want to make it thicker. So I'm going to tab back into object mode and then right over here on the modifier properties, I'm going to click on add modifier and let's go right down here to the solidify. We're just going to add the solidify right there and then I'm going to turn the thickness up so it's a bit thicker. So I'm going to make it about that thick and then I'm going to hover my mouse over the solidify modifier, make sure it's selected. You're going to press control A and that will apply the modifier. So if you tab into edit mode, this is actual geometry now. So I'm now going to click right 
right here to go to the face select and then I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to select this face and then hold down the shift key and select that face. So we have those bottom two faces selected. So I can now press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that down and then I can double tap the A key to select everything and I'll press G to grab and we're going to bring it up on the Z axis, bring it up like that. And then if you need to, you can also hold down the shift key and just select these faces again and press G and Z and we are going to bring that down. And then I'm going to tab back into edit mode and I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything and I'll press S to scale and we're going to scale that on the X axis and I'll just make it a little bit thicker like that and then we can tab back into object mode. Now I want to give it a bevel modifier so that there is a nice bevel along all the edges. So I'm going to click on add modifier. Let's go down here. We're going to add a bevel under generate and let's turn these segments up to like four so it's somewhat detailed and then I'm going to click and drag and turn this amount down. You can also hold down the shift key as you're dragging to make your movements more sensitive and I'm going to make it about that small maybe just slightly bigger and then using the object context menu I can shade this smooth. So I'm now going to tab in edit mode and just select everything and I'll press G to grab and we're going to bring it out on the X axis. So now that it's over here we've brought it over here in edit mode so if we tab back into object mode you can see that the origin point is still right there. So now what I can do is I can click on add modifier and we're going to add the mirror modifier and that's going to mirror it over to the other side. So if I tab in edit mode, I can now press G to grab and let's bring it in on the X axis. And also if for some reason you can't see the mirror, it might be because you need to turn on one of these ones here on the mirror settings. For me, it's the X axis. So I'm going to bring this in a little bit closer um, and this is going to hold the hot dogs. So something like that is pretty good. Let's also scale the entire thing down and I'll press G and Z and we're going to bring that down. So I want it to be over here. So I'll press G to grab. Let's bring it over on the Y axis like that. And then I can press G and Z and we are going to bring that down. And then I'm going to press seven on the numpad to go to top view. And I want to just select this again. And I'm going to scale it down even more because I want it to be much smaller, more like that size. Um, something like that is pretty good. Let's bring it down a little bit more. And we might need to scale it a little bit more um, once we add the hot dog, just to kind of get the scale right to the hot dog. Um, but for now, a scale like that is pretty good. Maybe just slightly smaller and I'll bring it down a little. All right, so now we are going to be creating the hot dog. So I'm again gonna press Shift C and that will center the 3D cursor to the center of the 3D scene. So I can press Shift A and let's go right down here and we're gonna add another cylinder. And then right down here above me on the add cylinder settings, you can just open that up. And on the vertices here, I'm gonna set this to 12. And then I can just close the cylinder settings. So I'm gonna press G to grab. Let's bring it up on the Z axis and then I can tab into edit mode. And then I'll press R to rotate. Let's rotate this on the Y axis. And I can type in nine, zero and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. And then I can press G to grab and let's bring this over on the X axis and we're gonna bring it over over here. So now I want to add the mirror modifier so it mirrors over to the other side. So click on add modifier and we can add the mirror modifier. And then for me it's the x-axis which moves it over to this side. All right now I'm going to go right here to the face select and then I can click right here on this face and I'm going to press x to delete and we want to delete the faces. And I'm doing that because I'm going to press a to select everything and then I'll press g to grab and I'll bring it down on the x-axis. And I'll just bring it in there so it's overlapping a little bit bit and then I'm going to turn on the clipping button right here on the mirror modifier and I can press G to grab and let's bring it out on the X axis like that. So now that is connecting together and because we have the clipping turned on it's going to be merged together. So let's press one on the numpad and then I'm going to press A to deselect everything. Let's click right up here on the vertex select. You can also press one on the top of your keyboard to go to the vertex select and then I just want to select this right here. So let's actually just hold down the alt key and select that ring of vertices and then I can press one again on the numpad to go back to the front view. And then I'm gonna press the Z key and hold down the Z key. I'll move my mouse over to the wireframe and then let go to go into the wireframe view. And then I'm going to press E to extrude. Let's extrude this out. And then I can press R to rotate and G to grab. We're just gonna bring it up a little bit and then I'll press E to extrude and R to rotate and G to grab. And we're gonna bring this one up a little bit more. And then I can press E to extrude place that right there and then I'll press S to scale and we're just going to scale that down a little bit 
and then I'll press E to extrude again and S to scale and we're going to scale that down even more. So now if you go back into solid view you can see we just have that hot dog and it's just kind of rotating up a little bit kind of makes it a little bit more cartoony or stylized. Let's tab back into object mode and I'm going to scale the entire thing down quite a bit and then you can see that it's pretty blocky so to make it more smooth I'm going to click on add modifier let's go down here under generate way down here and add the subdivision surface and then on the levels viewport and render you can see here's the viewport and the render let's turn this both up to two so that it is more smooth and then you can see it's still a little bit blocky so using the object context menu we can just shade that object smooth and then let's press one again to go to the front view and I'm going to tab into edit mode again so I now want to hold down the alt and shift key and select that ring of vertices and I'll press G to grab and we're going to bring that in a little bit and then let's just hold down the alt key and select that ring of vertices I'll press G to grab and push that in a little bit more and then I'll hold down the Z key move my mouse over to wireframe and let go and I'm going to tab back into edit mode and I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything and then in edit mode I'm going to press S to scale and we're going to make that hot dog a little bit bigger and then I can also press G to grab let's bring it out on the x-axis and we'll make it a little bit longer so about that far so if you zoom out you can see there's these bigger grids I want this half side of it to be a little bit longer than one of those bigger grids so like that let's press G and Z and we are going to bring that down there and then I can press Z hold down the Z button and move over to the solid view and let go and that'll go to the solid view and then I can press G to grab and let's bring this over on the Y axis and we're just gonna stick it right there and then I can tab in edit mode and I'll press S to scale and we're gonna make that sausage or hot dog quite a bit thicker I'll scale it up a little bit thicker and then just place it right there we can tab back into object mode now and then I can press G to grab and let's bring it up on the Z axis like that all right that is looking pretty good and then I'm gonna press zero on the numpad to go to camera view and I'm just going to select this and then shift select this and I'm gonna scale these both down a little bit more and then I'll press G and Z and bring them down a little bit and then I'm also gonna press G to grab and let's bring this over on the x-axis and I'm gonna stick it right in here about in the center now during the animation we're going to have more of these hot dogs and they're all going to be lined up and then the conveyor belt will move and the robot hand can grab the hot dogs. So I'm going to duplicate the hot dog and the hot dog holder and just move them over. So I'm going to first select the hot dog and then hold down the shift key and select the holder right there and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. I'm now going to bring it over on the X axis and then I want to type in three and enter. So that way it's going to move it over exactly by a value of three and then let's select this one again we're going to shift select this one again so we're selecting both of these in the center and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate let's bring it over again on the x-axis and then I can type in three but this is going to bring it back and I instead want to bring it over here so after you type in three you can type the negative button and that is going to change it to negative three so you can see right up here if you look right up there on the top left you can see what you're typing in so you can undo that so right now I'm bringing it over on the x-axis so I can type in negative three and now it's going to say negative three right up there. So we want to bring it over on the x-axis by negative three and then I'll hit enter. All right, so there we go. So now these are all exactly the same with the part. And so when we animate that, if we animate it correctly, then it's going to move over. And then when it loops, it'll look like this hot dog is the next hot dog. And speaking of animation, let's go ahead and do some basic animation. So we're not going to be doing all the animation quite yet, but we will be doing a little bit of the animation. Now I'm going to have this be a total of 250 frames so 250 frames in 24 frames per second you can see right here the frame rate is 24 frames per second 250 frames in 24 frames per second is 10 seconds and 250 frames works really well for this animation so I'm gonna have the end frame 250 and the start frame 1 and that way each of the looping animations will be about 10 seconds so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate this object but we're gonna parent all the other objects to this object so that when this object moves the other objects will move with it. So I'm going to select this hot dog and then hold down the shift key. We're going to select this hot dog and then also shift select the two holders for these hot dogs and then also shift and select the conveyor belt right here and then also hold down the shift key and select this hot dog and then lastly shift select this holder right here. So this one is selected last because it has a yellow outline but these have an orange
orange outline. So just make sure you shift and select this one last. I'm now going to press control P and we want to set parent to object keep transform. This way, all of the other objects are going to be selected to the last object, but they are going to keep their transform. So they are going to stay where they are. So I'm going to click on object keep transform. And now you can see that if I select this object and move it, all of these objects are parented to it. So they're going to be moved around, but then these objects can still be moved individually, but they're parented to this object. So now we can just animate this object and it'll move the other objects. So to do the animation, make sure that you have the timeline and I'm just going to split this right here so that my face doesn't get in the way of the timeline. So I'm going to set the timeline playhead to frame three. So you can just click and drag on the numbers here and change that to frame three. So I now want to add a keyframe right here. So I'm going to press the I key and then I'm going to click on the location, rotation and scale. And that way it's going to add a keyframe on this object. And you can see there's a little yellow diamond there and that is the keyframe right there on frame three. So I'm now going to move over to frame 110. So right here you can just type in frame 110 or you can also scrub with the playhead and just go to frame 110. So I now want to bring this over so that this hot dog is the same exact location as this hot dog and that way it'll look like it's a looping animation and it'll look the same and that way also this hot dog will move right to where this hot dog is. So I'm going to select this object again and I'm going to press G to grab and then I'm going to hit X to bring it over on the X axis and I want to type in three and then I also want to type in negative so it's negative three and then I can hit enter and it's going to bring it over there. So now we need to add a keyframe here. So again, make sure you're on frame 110 and I'm going to press the I button to insert a keyframe and I'm going to click on location, rotation and scale. So now if I move back here, you can see that if I play this, I'm going to press the space bar to play. If you press the space bar, that is going to play the animation and you can see this moves over and then this hot dog stops exactly where this hot dog was. So if you click back and forth, if you just click back and forth on frame zero to frame 120, you can see that it looks like nothing is moving, but actually the hot dog is moving. It's just in the same exact position as the other hot dog. So let's press control S again to save. And then we actually want to delete this hot dog because the robot arm is going to grab this hot dog and move it up and then stick it down on the hot dog bun. And so right over here, there's not actually going to be a hot dog because every hot dog, when it gets here, the robot arm is going to grab it. So I can simply just select this hot dog here. Let's press X to delete and we're going to delete that. And then if I play through this, you can see that there is supposed to be another hot dog here, um, but you can't see it, um, but we will fix that later on in the tutorial. All right, so the next thing we'll be creating is the robot's arm. So I'm going to press Shift-C again to center the 3D cursor to the center of our scene. Let's press Shift-A and I'm going to add a cylinder. And then if you click on the Add Cylinder Settings, I'm going to change the vertice count to 12 and then I will close this. So to see this better, I can press G to grab and we're going to bring it up on the Z axis and then I will tab into edit mode. So I'm going to press S and we're going to scale this down, click to place that and then I can press S to scale and we're going to scale this up on the Z axis to make it a bit longer. And then in edit mode, I'm also going to press shift A and let's go right here and add a UV sphere and I'll press G and Z and let's bring this up and then I can press S and we're going to scale that down a bit um, and I'll bring it down about there. So this is going to be the joint where the robot's arm actually rotates. Let's tap back into edit mode and then I'm going to click right here to go to the face select and then I'm just going to zoom in here and I will press A to deselect everything and then I'm just going to select this face on the cylinder and because we don't need it I'll press X to delete and we can, can delete the faces. All right and then right down here let's also add a bevel just to bevel this out. So I'm going to click right up here to the vertex select and I'll hold down the alt key and just select that ring of vertices and then I can press control B and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel out a little bit to add a few cuts and then just click to place that there and then I can tab back into object mode and then using the object context menu we can shade this smooth. Now it's a little bit low quality, so I'm going to go right over here to the modifier properties. Let's click on add modifier and way down here under generate, I'm gonna add the subdivision surface modifier and let's just set the viewport and render both to one so that is more smooth. And then later on when we rig this, we are going to want the origin point to be right up here so that when we rotate it, it's gonna rotate by the joint. So I'm gonna tap back into edit mode and press A to deselect everything. So I can now hover my mouse over this object and press L and that is going to select the linked vertices 
these. And then I want to put the origin point right here. So to do that, I'm going to press shift S and shift S is going to bring up these cursor settings, the 3d cursor. And I want to bring my mouse down here to cursor to selected, and then I can let go of the shift and S button. And that way it's going to bring the 3d cursor into the very center of what we have selected. So I can now tab back into object mode. And then if you click on object, you can go to set origin and we want to set the origin to the 3d cursor. So now that origin point is going to be where the 3d cursor is. And so now I can rotate this and you can see that it's going to rotate from that joint. So I can double tap the R key to do the trackball rotation and it's rotating from the circular joint. So I'm now just going to select this object in object mode and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And then let's press Z and we're going to bring this up on the Z axis and let's bring it up to about there. And then I'm going to select it again. And one more time, I'll press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it up on the Z axis and I'll just stick it right there. So we now have this big robotic arm. Let's also hold down the shift key and select all these and I'll press G to grab and we'll bring it up on the Z axis so that we have some more space here so that we can make the claws. So to make the claws, I'm going to press shift a in object mode and let's go here and add a cylinder so this is going to be a new object and then we'll tab into edit mode and let's press r to rotate let's rotate this on the y axis and then i can type in nine zero and enter to rotate that by 90 degrees and then i can also press s to scale we want to scale it on the x axis and let's make that a bit thinner like that all right so i'm now going to press three on the numpad to go to side view and i'm going to press z hold down the z button move over to wireframe and let go then i can press a to deselect everything so i'm now going to press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select these bottom vertices and I'll press G to grab. Let's press Z to bring it on the Z axis and we're going to make that a bit smaller and then I can also scale the whole thing down a bit. All right and then while we're still in edit mode I'm going to press shift A and we're going to add another cylinder and let's press R to rotate. We'll rotate this on the Y axis and then I can type in 9 and 0 and enter to rotate that over by 90 degrees and I can also press Z move my mouse back to solid and let go. All right so I can now press S to scale. We're going to scale this down and then I can also scale this on the X axis and we'll make it a bit smaller like like that. All right, and then also I want to bring this up a little bit. All right, so let's tap back into object mode and I want to add a bevel to this object. So let's click on add modifier and we can add the bevel modifier. I'll turn the segments up to three and then I can hold down the shift key and drag this amount down just to make the amount really small. And then using the object context menu, I can shade that smooth. And then it's also kind of blocky. So I'm going to press control one and control one is the shortcut key to add a subsurf. You could also just add the subsurf modifier. And I'm going to turn the levels viewport and render both up to two so it's nice and smooth and then you can see that it's adding that sharp point right there and that is because there is a bevel there so this angle right here we just need to turn up that angle amount until it's enough that it's not going to add a bevel to that angle um, so we're just going to make that a bit bigger it seems like an angle of 46 works for me all right and that is looking very good so i now want to add a mirror modifier so that it gets mirrored over to the other side so i'm going to click on add modifier and let's add the mirror modifier right down here under generate mirror. All right, and then I need to tab into edit mode. I'm gonna double tap the A key to select everything. I'll press G to grab and let's bring it out on the Y axis and bring that over. So now on the mirror right here, I need to turn on the Y one and I'll turn off the X one. So now you can see it's mirroring that over on the Y axis. So this is gonna be the starting of the robot's claws and then we'll duplicate this and have another piece of the robot's claws down here. So I'm gonna press three to go to side view and I'm gonna tab back into object mode. Let's press G to grab and we're going to bring this to the very center. So the origin point there is in the very center. So I can now tab in edit mode. Let's press S to scale and R to rotate and G to grab. And we're just going to stick this um, about there, maybe scale it up just a little bit more, not too big. And I'll bring it a bit closer, maybe just make it a little bit bigger. All right, so I now want to duplicate this and make the second piece of the claw. So I'm going to tab back into object mode and then I'll press shift D and I'll press Z to bring it down on the Z axis. And then I can tab back into edit mode. So I'm now going to press R to rotate and let's rotate this back so that it is straight and then I'm going to press Z, hold down the Z key, go to wireframe and let go and I'll press A to deselect this. So I can now press B for the box select and I'm going to drag a box around these vertices and I can press G to grab and let's bring this down on the Z axis like that and then I can tap back into object mode. So you can see now that's a bit sharper um, because that is the point, the end point of the claw. So I'm going to tap back into edit mode and let's press A to select everything. I can press S to scale and R to rotate, R to rotate that and G to grab and we're going to stick 
stick this right in there. Maybe scale it up a little bit more. And then I want to scale it down even more. So I'm going to press S to scale. Let's scale it on the X axis and I'm going to make that thinner. Um, but then I want that circular piece right there to kind of come out because it's going to be kind of like the hinge to rotate it. So I'm going to press the Z key, go to wireframe, let go. And then I'm just going to hover my mouse over this object and press L. That'll select the linked vertices. Let's hold down the Z button and go back to solid view. So I'll press S to scale. We're going to scale this on the X axis and I'll just bring that out a little bit. So it's coming through and then go back into object mode. So now this piece can rotate and then these pieces will rotate. All right, that's good. So let's select this piece and then shift select this piece. We're going to press one on the numpad to go to front view. I can press G to grab, but we're going to bring it over on the X axis and just stick it right there in the very middle. And then I can also bring it down a little bit on the Z axis. All right, so now we need to create a piece in the center here, which is going to connect them. So let's press shift C again to center the 3D cursor and I'll press shift A and we're going to go right here and add a cube. So I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring this up on the Z axis and then I can tab into edit mode and I'll press S to scale we're going to scale that whole thing down and I want to add a mirror modifier so it mirrors it over to the other side so let's click on add modifier and let's go right down here and we're going to add the mirror modifier I can press G to grab and let's bring it out on the y-axis over like that and then I want this to mirror over on the y-axis so on the axis here I'm going to turn off the X and turn on the Y so now what I want to do is bring these together but before I do that I need to delete that face right in there so I'm going to click right here to the face select and then I can just select this face and then I'll press X to delete and we want to delete the faces so now there won't be an extra face inside there so I can now double tap the A key to select everything and let's also turn on the clipping right here so that clipping is going to make it merge together in the center so I can press G to grab let's bring it in on the Y axis and just push that together until it merges and then I can also scale this down so S to scale and we're going to scale it down on the X axis and make it a bit smaller like that and then I can press G to grab let's bring it out on the Y axis and I want to bring that out far enough that this circular piece could go through that. And then I'll also scale this out. So let's scale it up on the Z axis, bring it up on the Z axis like that. And then I can press G to grab and we'll bring it down on the Z axis like that. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, let's make it a little bit thinner though. So I'll press S to scale and I'll scale it on the X axis and make it a bit thinner. All right, now I need a piece to be going up here. So I'm gonna press Control R and Control R will add a loop cut. And then once you move your mouse right here, you can just click and drag over and then just click to place that about there. All right, so I can now click right here to go to the face select and I'm just gonna select this face and then I can press E to extrude and we're gonna extrude that up. Now it is really close. So let's tap back into object mode and then in object mode, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select these other two pieces. And then I can press G to grab and let's bring it down on the Z axis and make that a bit bigger. All right, that's looking good. So I can now select this piece and I can tab to go back into edit mode. Now I wanna make this piece kind of round. This part right here, I wanna add a bevel and make it round. So let's click right here to go to the vertex select. I'm gonna select this vertex, hold down the shift key and select this vertex. Now to manually add a bevel, you can press control B. So control B is gonna add a bevel and then you can scroll your mouse wheel out to make more cuts. And I'm gonna make like that many cuts and then I'll click to place that just so that it's nice and smooth. Now on the edges here, you can see that it isn't really beveled, it's pretty sharp. So for this, let's just click on add modifier and we're gonna add the bevel modifier. And then I need to turn the amount way down. So hold down the shift key, make your amount really small. And then we can also turn the segments up so that it is more smooth. And then using the object context menu, we can just shade that object smooth. All right, that's looking pretty good. Although I do think I wanna select this object and press G and Z. We're just gonna bring that up a little bit more. All right, let's press Control S to save. That was looking very good. Um, I'm gonna select this object and then hold down the Shift key, select this object, and we can tab into edit mode on both of these objects. I'm gonna double tap the A key to select both of them. And then I wanna bring them in. So I'll press G to grab. I'm gonna bring them in on the Y axis and just push them a bit closer to each other, um, something like that. All right, that's looking good. Now I also wanna add another piece right here to make it rotate so that this piece can be rotated on the Z axis like that. So I'm gonna select this object and I'll tab into edit mode and I'm gonna click right here to the face select and then I can select this face. So I'll now press shift D to duplicate. I'll bring it down on the Z axis and then I can scale it down. So I'm now gonna press P and that will bring up the separate and I'm gonna separate this by selection. So I can now tab back into object mode and just select this object and tab back into edit mode. So I'm gonna press a to select everything and then I can press E to extrude. 
let's extrude this up and then I want to delete that face in there because we don't need it so you can press X to delete and we want to delete the faces all right and then we want to add a bevel right there to kind of sharpen that up or actually I can just add some loop cuts so let's press Control R I'm going to add a loop cut right here I can click and bring that down and then also I want to inset this face so I'm going to click right here to go to the face select and I can just select that face and then I'm going to press I and I is the shortcut key to inset that face and then I can tap back into object mode. Now you can see that we need to recalculate the normals because it's darker right here, but then this darker part is over there. So I know the normals have been flipped. So just tap back into edit mode and we're gonna select everything with the A key. And then to recalculate the normals, you can press Shift N and then we can tab back into object mode. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's uh, bring this down on the Z axis though a little bit so it's a little bit longer. So I now want to join both of these objects together so that they're the same object. But to join them together, I need the modifiers to be the same and you can see these have different modifiers. So what I'm gonna do is just apply the modifiers on this object. So I'm gonna just click right here on this object and then I can click on this drop down here and click on apply, that'll apply the mirror and then click on this drop down and click on apply to apply the bevel. And then I'm gonna click on this object as well and on the subsurface I'm going to click on this and you can click on the drop down and click on apply. You can also just hover your mouse over the modifier and press control A and that will apply the modifier. So I can now select this object, hold down the shift key, select this object, and then I can press control J and that is going to join them together so that they are the same object. So when we do the animation, I'll be able to rotate this on the Z axis, and that's gonna kind of rotate the wrist, kind of like how we would rotate our hand kind of like this, and that way the claw is gonna be rotated back and forth. So we're able to rotate these, and that rotates fine, um, but we do need to rig all of these so that when we move these objects, it's gonna move the other objects down the chain. Before we do that though, I need to separate these into their own object because these are gonna be moving individually. So what I need to do is apply the mirror modifier and then separate them into their own object. So right down here, the mirror modifier you can just click on the drop down and click on apply and then click on this object right here and then down here on the mirror click on the drop down and click on apply so I'm now going to shift select both of these objects and I'm going to tab into edit mode that's going to go into the multi object editing and I'm going to press 3 on the numpad to go to side view so I can now click right here to the vertex select and I'm going to deselect everything with a I'm going to hold down the Z button move my mouse over to wireframe and let go and then I'm going to just select this side right here so I'm going to press B for the box select I'm going to click and drag and make a box on this side and then I can press P and then we're going to click on selection so we're going to separate this by the selection so I can now tab back into object mode and you can see that because these were separate objects they've they're now separated into their own object so we now have four different pieces here now if we try to rotate these they're rotating from the center and I don't want that I want it to rotate by this hinge piece right here so we're just going to need to set the origin point to the very center of those hinges so we're just going to have to do that for each object individually so I'm going to tab into edit mode on this object and I'm gonna to go to the face select I'm gonna select this face, hold down the shift key and select this face. So that is the very center of the hinge. So those are the two pieces on each side of the hinge. So I can now press shift S, hold down the shift and S button. You can move your mouse down to cursor to selected and then let go of the shift and S button. And that way the 3D cursor is gonna be in the very center of that selection. So I can now back in object mode, I can click on object, Let's click on set origin and I can set the origin to the 3D cursor. Right up here, make sure the transform pivot point is set to the median point. It should be on default. So if you now rotate this, it's gonna rotate by the origin point and so that's gonna rotate correctly. So I just need to do the same thing for all these three. So I'm gonna select this object. Let's tab into edit mode. I'm gonna select this face, hold down the shift key and select this face. And then I'm gonna press shift S move down to cursor to selected and then let go. That is going to center that and then we need to tab back into object mode and then let's click on object. We're gonna go down here to set origin and we need to set the origin to the 3D cursor. So I can now rotate that and that is fine. All right, so I'm gonna select this object and tab in edit mode. I'm gonna select this face, hold down the shift key, select this face and then I can press shift S, move down to cursor to selected and let go. We can go back into object mode, click on object, set origin, and we wanna set the origin to the 3D cursor, so that's rotating correctly now. So one more time, we're gonna select this object. Let's tab to go into edit mode. I'm just going to select this face, hold down the shift key, select this face, um, and then we can press shift S, move down and let go, so the cursor is gonna to go to the selected. Let's tab to go back into object mode, and then right up here, we can click on object, set origin, and we're gonna set the origin to the 3D cursor. So now what I need to do is I need to parent these objects 
objects to these objects and then we'll keep on parenting all these objects and so that way when we move this object all the objects are going to move along with it so let's select this object and then we're going to hold down the shift key and select this object so i want to parent this object to this object so that when we move this one the other one's going to move with it so we have to first select this object hold down the shift key and select this object now to parent objects i'm going to press Control p so Control p is going to bring, bring up the parenting settings and i want to use the object keep transform why we want to select the keep transform is because we don't want the objects to move we want their transform to stay exactly where they are so we're going to click on object keep transform and now that i've done that i can select this object and i can press r to rotate I can click to place that and you can see that the bottom claw is moving with the top claw but i can now select this and press r to rotate and we can rotate that as well so as you can see now we can just animate these and it's going to rotate that over let's press ctrl z though to undo that movement so there is a problem here if i just keep pressing ctrl z there is a problem and that is that this can rotate sideways and i don't want it to do that so i'm going to lock the transforms so i'm going to press the n key and that is going to bring up this side panel right here here's my uh, short shortcut key add-on I'm gonna go right over here to item and you can see that there is this transform settings so if we press R to rotate you can see it's rotating and all those values are changing if I press the X key that is going to constrain it to the x-axis so it can only rotate on the x-axis and that is what I want to do I don't want to be able to move it anywhere else I only want to be able to rotate it on the x-axis so if we click on these lock buttons that is going to lock all of them and so I'm gonna click on the lock button on all of these except for the X rotation that way if I press R to rotate you can see we've now constrained it and so even if we try to rotate it sideways it's only going to rotate on the x-axis so I'm now going to select this object and let's click and drag you can click and drag to lock all of them but then I just want to unlock the X rotation so now if I rotate this it's only going to move on the X axis let's press Control S again to save and then let's keep on doing this so I'm now going to parent the rest of them and then we can lock them so I'm going to select this object hold down the shift key and select this object last and then I'm going to press Control P and we want to set it to object keep transform so now if I rotate this one that one is going to move along with it so I now want to select both of these objects and we're going to parent them to this object so that this object can rotate around so I'm going to select this object hold down the shift key select this object and then hold down the shift key and lastly select this object because this is going to be the controller object so I can now press control P that is the shortcut key control P and then we're going to do object keep transform so now if I rotate this object you can see that the other objects are going to rotate with it and also for some reason the origin point is way up here so what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode and I'm going to hold down the alt key and then just select that that ring of faces and then I can press shift s I want to hold down the shift and s key and move my mouse down to the cursor to selected and that way the 3d cursor is going to be right there in the center so then if I tab back into object mode I can click on object and let's click on set origin and I want to set the origin to the 3d cursor so I can now rotate this and I can rotate it on the z-axis and that is working much better all right so I now want this object to be parented to this object so I'm first going to select this object and then hold down the shift key select this object I can press Control p and I want to set it to object keep transform so now if I rotate this object the entire arm is gonna move so I'm gonna select this object and then shift select this object I'll press Control p and let's click on object keep transform and then one more time select this object hold down the shift key and select this object and then Control p and we're gonna do the object keep transform all right so now you can see that I can rotate this and it's gonna rotate everything and then I can rotate this but then I can go back and rotate that and it's going to rotate correctly. So everything now is rotating together. Um, and so I can just animate that robotic arm. So that is working very well. Now I'm going to press control Z to undo that because I want to bring it back to its default position. So I now want to lock some of these objects because like for instance, this one, I only want it to rotate on the Z axis. These ones can move freely, um, but I need to lock these three objects. So I'm going to select this object. Let's press N to open up the side panel. So just press the N key and then I'm going to click and drag and lock all of these transforms. But then I just want to unlock the rotation X so I can now rotate that that's rotating correctly let's do the same thing for this object so I'm going to select this one hold down the shift key and we're going to lock all these but then just unlock the X rotation 
that is looking good. Let's select this one here. So this one, if I rotate this, I want to press Z to rotate it on the Z axis. And I only want to rotate that over on the Z axis. So I'm going to lock all these. So just click and drag, but then I want to unlock the Z rotation. So I can now just rotate that and that is looking good. All right. So then these objects can move freely. Um, so that is good. So let's press N to close the panel. And we now have the finished rigged robotic arm. All right, just press Control S again to save your project and let's create the hot dog plate now. So I'm gonna press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor. Let's press Shift A and I'm going to add a plane. I'll press period on the numpad to zoom over to that. I'll press G to grab. Let's bring this up on the Z axis and then I can tab into edit mode and I'm going to scale this. So let's scale it out on the X axis and make it a bit longer. So this is gonna be the plate for the hot dog. So I'm gonna press one on the numpad to go to side view and I want to give it some thickness so I'll first press G to grab and let's bring it up on the Z axis a bit and then I can press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that down. I'll now press E to extrude again click to place that and then I can press S to scale and we're going to make that a bit smaller and then I can press E to extrude again and we're going to extrude that down a little bit just like that. All right, so I'm now going to select this fit top face right here and let's press one to go to the front view and I'm going to press I and we're going to inset this down and just give a little bit of a thickness there and then I'll press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that down. Now we can't really see it so let's press Z, hold down the Z button, go to wireframe and let go and then I can press G and Z, we're going to bring it up a little bit on the Z axis. So I can now press E to extrude, we're going to bring that way down and then I'll press S to scale and we're going to scale that down and then you can press G and Z and bring that down a little bit. So we're we're basically just creating some thickness in there. So if I go back into the solid view, you can see that's what it's looking like. Now it looks like we need to recalculate the normals because the shading is a bit off. So just double tap the A key. And then to recalculate the normals, I can press shift N. That will recalculate the normals. All right, now it is a very blocky plate. And so I'm gonna press control two. Control two is the shortcut key to add a subsurf modifier with two levels. You can also just click on add modifier and add the subdivision surface. And then I actually wanna turn up the render and viewport up to three, so it's pretty detailed so it's pretty high quality and then using the object context menu I can shade this smooth. Now I want this to be more of a square plate so I'm going to tab back into edit mode and I'm going to press Control R and then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel out so that there are two cuts and then I can left click and then I can right click so it hops back to the center. And then I wanna do the same thing here, so I'm gonna press Control R, but this time I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel out until there are four, and then I can left click and then right click so it hops back to the center. So I can now tab into object mode and you can see now we have this nice square plate um, and it has some nice edges there. Now I wanna tab back into edit mode and I wanna kinda of thicken up some of these things. One thing that I wanna do is select everything and I wanna scale this down, so I'm gonna scale it on the Z axis and make it a bit more flat, and then I can tab into object mode Mode, see how that's looking. Let's bring this up on the z-axis so I can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I want to kind of thicken this up. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. Let's click and drag down and then click to place that. All right, let's also press control R to add a loop cut right here. So I can click, drag down and then click to place that just kind of to sharpen that up there. Let's also sharpen this up here. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut here click and bring this up and click to place that. All right, and then I'm also gonna add a loop cut right in here. So I'll press Control R and then left click and right click so it hops back to the center. And then I can press G to grab and I'm gonna bring this up on the Z axis so it's a little bit more round like that. And then let's also sharpen this up here. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut, click here and then you can kind of drag out to thicken that up and then click to place that. All right, just go back into object mode, see how that's looking. You can add some more loop cuts if you need to thicken anything up, but um, that was looking pretty good for the hot dog plate. So I'm going to select this plate and I'll press G to grab. Let's bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it right there. And then also it does look a little bit big. So I think I need to scale it down a bit. So I'm going to press seven on the numpad to go to top view. And then I'm going to press S to scale and we're going to scale this much smaller. So it's about that big. And then I do want it to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'll press S to scale and let's scale it out on the X axis a little bit. So it's a bit longer. So probably something like that. And then I can tab back into object mode. Let's press G to grab and we'll bring it down on the Z axis and stick it on that conveyor belt. All right, press control S again to save. And that is looking pretty good. I do think I want to make it a little bit thicker. So so I'm going to 
go to top view. So press seven on the numpad to go to top view. I can tab into edit mode and then I want to press S to scale and we're going to scale it up on the X axis a little bit. So it's a bit longer and then I can tab back into object mode and let's scale this down a little bit more. So you can press zero to go into the camera view and see how that's looking. And I need to scale it down even more. And then I'll press G to grab and let's bring it back on the X axis a little bit. All right, so now we are going to be modeling the hot dog bun. So let's press shift C again to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center. Center. And I'm going to press shift A and let's go right here and we're going to add a cube. I can press G to grab and we're going to bring this up on the Z axis and then I can scale this down quite a bit. And then I'll press period on the numpad to zoom into it. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I want to add a mirror modifier. So let's click on add modifier and we're going to go down here and add a mirror modifier. I'll press G to grab and let's bring this out on the X axis. And then I can click right over here on the face select and I'm just going to select this face and I'll press X to delete and I want to delete the faces because I don't want that extra face in there and then I want to turn on the clipping button and that way when I press A to select everything I can press G to grab and I can bring this in on the x-axis and you can see now that is merging together so I can now press G to grab and let's bring this out on the x-axis like that and then I can tab back into object mode let's bring this down on the z-axis and I move the plate over but I want to actually bring the plate back to the center so that I can kind of get the scale for the hot dog bun so I'm going to select the plate and I'm going to press alt G so alt G is going to click clear the movement so now it's going to bring it back to the center and then I can press G to grab and let's bring this up on the z-axis and just stick it right there so I can now select the hot dog bun again and we're going to scale this down and make it a bit smaller so I can kind of see the scale of that so I'm going to tab into edit mode and then I can press s to scale and let's scale this down on the z-axis and make it a bit smaller so then back in object mode I'm going to press Control 2 and Control 2 is going to add a subdivision surface with two levels and then using the object context menu I can shade that smooth so so let's tab back into edit mode on the hot dog and I'm going to go to the face select. So click right here on the face select and I'm just going to select this face. So I can press G to grab and let's bring this up on the Z axis to make it a bit smaller. And then I can press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that down and then I'll press S to scale and we are going to scale the whole thing down like that. All right, so that is the shape that we're getting. Now I wanna kind of thicken this up, so I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut. Let's bring the loop cut out there and then click to place that, so we now have that loop cut there. And then I'm also going to press Control R right here, and I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel out once so that there are two loop cuts, and then I can left click and right click so it brings it back to the center. So I can now press G to grab. Let's bring it out on the X axis and just push that out a bit. Um, so it's a bit longer, just like that. And then I'm gonna click right back over here on the face select and I can select this face right here. And if you want to, you can go to, into object mode and bring the whole thing up a bit so you can see it a bit better and then go back into edit mode. So using the face select, I'm just gonna select this face and I'm gonna press G to grab. Let's bring it in on the X axis like that. And then I can press G and Z and we're gonna bring that down. Just click to place that just so that the hot dog bun is a bit more round and kind of comes out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go right here to the edge select. So you can click right there to go to the edge select. I'm gonna select this edge and I'll press G and Z and we're gonna bring that down. Just bring it down a little bit so that that hot dog bun just kind of comes out a little bit and it's just a little bit more puffy. And then I can also go back to the face select and just select this face and I'll bring it down a little bit more. All right, so back in edit mode, I'm going to select all the top faces. So I'm gonna select this face and then hold down the shift key and select all of these faces. I'm now going to press I and I is going to inset the faces. Now I want the faces to be inset, but I want them to be merged with the mirror. So I'm now going to press the B key and the B key is going to toggle the boundary. So you can see right up here, it says boundary off and boundary on if you press B. So I wanna press B so that the boundary is turned off and that way it's now going to connect with the mirror there in the center of the hot dog bun. So I'll just bring that down, click to place that, and then I can press G and Z, and we're gonna bring that down a little bit just so that the inside of the hot dog bun just kind of comes in just a little. And you could also scale that down a little bit more if you need to. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I do wanna give this a displacement modifier just to make it so that it's all bumpy and lumpy and it makes it look more like bread. Before I do that, I do want to apply the mirror modifier so that it'll look different on both sides. So I'm gonna click on the mirror modifier. You can click on the drop down and click 
click on apply. So if you tap into edit mode, now that is old actual geometry. So let's now click on add modifier and we're going to go right down here and add the displace modifier. And then we can click on new to add a new texture. Now to give it a texture, I'm going to click right over here on this button right here. And that is going to just take me right over here to the texturing properties. So I can now click on the type here and I want to change this to clouds to make it nice and puffy. And then also we can turn the size down a bit so it has a bit more detail. Now you can see that it's very low quality. So I'm going to click right back over here on the modifier properties and on the levels viewport and render, I'm going to turn this all up to like five so that it is much more detailed. And then if I tap into edit mode, you can see there is some spaces where it's a bit bigger and I want to add a little bit more geometry here just so that it's a little bit more even. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. I'm going to left click and right click to just add a loop cut there. I'll press control R and then left click and right click to add a loop cut there. So now the geometry should just be a little bit more even when it's subdivided. All right, now that is not looking like bread. That is way too sharp. So on the strength here, I'm going to turn the strength way down. I'm going to turn it down to a 0.035. And that is much better because I don't want it to be too lumpy. Now it is a little bit too small now. So again, on the displacement modifier, I'm going to click on this button and that's going to take me to the texturing tab. And I want to turn the size up a bit. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and then drag this value. And I'm just going to make the size a little bit bigger. Um, so something like that is pretty good. And then I need to click right back over here on the modifier properties. And I'm going to turn the strength up just a little. So I think I might just turn this to a 0.1. That is looking pretty good. So you can see it's a little bit lumpy here and there, um, but it's not too lumpy. And I think I'll just turn this up a little bit more to like a 0.12, just that it's slightly more bumpy. All right, so there we go. We now have the hot dog bun. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead now and texture paint this. So we're just going to be doing some very simple texture painting. Uh, you don't need to use a drawing tablet for the texture painting if you don't want to, because because it's pretty simple and easy to do. I'll just be using my mouse, but if you have some sort of drawing tablet or pad tablet, you could use that for the texture painting, um, but it is pretty simple. It's not gonna be too hard to do. Basically, we're just going to make this kind of a bread color, and then inside here, we're gonna make that a lighter bread color. Because you know, if you cut a piece of bread or cut a hot dog bun, usually inside the bun, it's a lighter bread, but then right out here, outside of the hot dog bun, it's a little bit darker of a color. So that's what we're gonna be texture painting. And then once we do that, we're going to duplicate this and rotate it over. Um, and that way we'll have both sides of the hot dog bun, but they're going to be both the same. So we'll just make one and then duplicate it over. All right. Now to do the texture painting, I don't want the displacement modifier because that's going to just make things confusing. So what I'm going to do just for now is click on this button right here, and that is going to hide it. So you can see it looks like a monitor icon. That's just going to hide it from our view. So it's still there, but it won't affect the texture painting. So we can just texture paint this and then turn this back on after we're done. So I'm going to select this object and let's click right over here on the UV editing tab and then I can zoom in here. So I now need to UV unwrap this before I do the texture painting. So I'm just going to double tap the A key to select everything in edit mode and I'm going to press U and U is going to bring up the UV mapping settings and I want to click on the smart UV project. Now on the island margin right here, I want to turn the island margin to a 0.01 and then I'm going to click on OK and this way there's going to be a little bit of space here in between these islands. So each one of these pieces here that is called an island in the UV mapping and so by turning that to point one you can see that in between them there's just going to be a little bit of extra space and that way we're guaranteed not to have any overlapping when we're texture painting. All right so now what we need to do is we need to create something to texture paint on. So right here in the UV editing I'm going to click on this new button and we're actually going to create a texture. So on the name here I'm just going to call this hot dog bun. All right hot dog bun and then I want to make this a 4k texture just so that it's very high quality. So I'm going to type in 4096 by 4096. So that is the resolution of a normal 4K texture, 4096 pixels by 4096 pixels. Now for the color here, we need to make this the default color that we want. So I'm gonna make this a bit lighter and I'm gonna make it kind of an orangey kind of reddish color. And if you'd like to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and then you can type in this hex value. So it's A7, 6A, 
1A. All right, so that is the exact color that I'll be using. And then I'm going to click on OK, and that is going to create that map there that we can texture paint on. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to put this into the material. So let's click over here on the shading tab. And on this hot dog bun, I need to click on new. And on this material name, I'm just going to call this hot dog bun. All right, hot dog bun. So now I need to press shift A, and I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to search for an image texture. Let's just drop this down here. And then I can click on the drop down and we can see all of our textures and I want to click on the hot dog bun so I can now take the color and put that into the base color and that way we'll be able to see the actual texture on this object so let's press Control s again to save and then we can click right over here on the texture painting tab and we can now go ahead and texture paint this so if you want to you can texture paint right over here um, but it's much more easy and much more intuitive to texture paint on the actual object so I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller just to kind of get it out of the way because I don't actually need this over here and I'm I'm going to make this a little bit smaller as well actually quite a bit smaller just so that we can see this and then i am going to be using the normal draw brush so i can press the t button to close that and the t button to close that i just want to make this really big so i'm going to drag this out just so that we have a lot of space uh, to texture paint this so i'm going to be using my computer mouse because it is pretty easy to texture paint normally when i do texture painting i use a drawing tablet because drawing tablets are really helpful for the texture painting um, but you can just use your mouse if you want to for this it is pretty easy also if you'd like to check out my tutorial on how to do texture painting i have a couple tutorials i'll have the links in the description for those tutorials all right, so the only thing we're gonna be doing is making the inside of the hot dog bun a lighter brown color. So it's gonna be more of like a peachy color. So right over here on the color, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna make this kind of a peachy bright color. And if you'd like to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of FFCE9D. So that is the exact color that I'll be using for the inside of the bread. So I also want to go right over here and I want to turn on the X and Y symmetry. And that way, when I click and drag and start to paint, you can see it's going to paint that over on the symmetry. So it's going to mirror it over and that way we don't have to paint the entire thing. We can just paint this side and it'll mirror it over. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing F and F is going to change the brush size. So press F and then you can drag up and then click to place that. You can also just drag the radius right here. And then also the strength value I'm just going to leave that at one for now so that's pretty big so I can now just click and drag and I'm going to start to paint that and I'm going to make all of this top part be the light brown so I'm just clicking with my mouse and I'm just dragging of course you can use a drawing tablet if you want to if I were doing a more detailed texture paint like if I were texture painting um, more subtle textures and maybe I was like texture painting more details then I would use my drawing tablet um, but we are also going to be using some procedural textures to make it look a bit more like bread so I'm just going to click and drag and texture paint all that and you can of course press Control Z if you need to undo something that you've done I can press F to make my brush smaller and then I can just make the edges a bit more sharp and then I do want to kind of make it slowly transition from the light to the dark so what I'm going to do is press F to make my brush size bigger and then you can also press shift F and shift F is going to change the brush size you can also just change the strength so I'm going to change the strength way down to around a point one and then I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to just make that a little bit more subtle there maybe I'll turn the strength up a little bit more to maybe a point two or a point three and then I can just go around here and I can paint that now I don't want this to look exactly the same all the way around I do want it to look a little bit more organic and natural so I'm actually going to turn off the symmetry so I'm going to click on those buttons to turn off the symmetry and then I can just click and drag and I'm just going to drag back and forth so I'm just clicking and dragging and making that so you can basically see what it's doing so there's basically now a much smoother transition instead of it being really sharp I could also turn the strength down a little bit more if I want to make that a bit more subtle and then I'm just going to go along here make that a nice smooth transition okay I'm just kind of holding it down and also clicking and tapping that sometimes works really well and it is totally fine that like some parts it's like a little bit more and then some parts it's a little bit less it just makes it a bit more natural and organic so I'm just going to go along here and just hand paint that okay maybe I'll turn the strength up a little bit more kind of go along here all right let's keep going we're almost done all right almost done here I'm just kind of going around the entire thing and making sure that looks all smooth and nice maybe paint a little bit more right there 
All right, that's looking pretty good. Just kind of look around. Um, and I do want some of the lightness to be kind of coming through here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go around here and just kind of tap on the edges, just kind of tap and make some of those spots just come down a little bit just to make it a little bit more uneven. So just go around here, make a few spots. You can kind of see like down here, it's coming down a little bit more. Um, and I do think that looks quite nice. All right, and that is it. So my texture painting is finished. So if you just need to pause the video, you can just finish up your texture painting. Um, but this is good for me. So something that's really important is that you save this image because if Blender crashes or you close Blender, it's not going to save the image in the Blender file and you're gonna have to redo this. So what you need to do right over here, just click and drag and open this up and you need to click on image and then you need to click on save as. And I'm just gonna save this in a folder on my computer and I'm just gonna name it hot dog bun and I'll just make it a JPEG file. So right over here, if you press N to open up the side panel, I'll just make it a JPEG file so that the image size is a bit smaller. Um, and I'm just going to name it hot dog bun. You could name it hot dog bun texture or whatever you want to do. And I'll just click on save as. So we have now saved this image here onto our computer as an image. So now if we close Blender, Blender will still be able to access the file. So let's go back over here to the shading tab and we can see how that's looking. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the Z button, go to the material preview and then let go uh, to preview how that's looking. And that is looking pretty cool. So now let's click back over here on the modifier properties. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this button here on the displacement and that way we'll actually be able to see the displacement. Let's bring this up here so I can see it a little bit better. So you can now see that's looking much more like bread because we have that displacement there. All right, so another thing that I wanna do is I wanna do a bit of a procedural setup to make it look more like bread. So we're gonna be adding some noise textures and some different things um, to make it look more like bread. So in the shading tab, I'm just gonna kinda of get a nice view here and let's kind of drag this out and bring this over. Now, because I'm doing this in cycles render, I do want to be able to see this in the rendered view. But if I press Z, move my mouse up to go into the rendered view, you can see that that doesn't look very good because we don't have very good lighting. So I'm going to go right over here to the world and I'm going to add in an HDRI to get some nice lighting. So on the world here, I'm going to click on this button right here, this little yellow dot, and I'm going to change it under texture. I'm going to change it to environment texture. And then we can click on open to open up the texture. And then here's the HDRI that I'll be using. I talked about this at the beginning of the tutorial. So if you want to download this, it's a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. So I'm going to click on this and then click on open image. And I also downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. So I'm going to open this up. And now if I press Z, go into wireframe, you can see how that's looking. So that's looking much better. Now I don't want to be able to see all this stuff in the background. It's going to make my render slower. So what I'm going to do is just select this object and then I can press shift H. So shift H is going to hide everything else, but then the thing that's selected will still be showing. So I'm now gonna go into rendered mode just by pressing Z, moving my, my mouse up into rendered view. And I'm just gonna to move to a good view, maybe something like that, um, so I can see how that's looking. All right, so I'm now going to create the procedural setup. Now, while we're creating the procedural setup with the procedural nodes, I am gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just click on edit, and then let's open up Blender's user preferences. And then if you click over on the add-ons tab right over here, you can go to the search, and you can start to search for the Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on, and I'll show you how to use it in the video. All right, so now that the Node Wrangler is turned on, let's press Shift A, and I'm gonna first start by adding a noise texture. Let's drop this down here. I need to press the Z button and go into the rendered view so that I can preview how that's looking. And then using the feature from the Node Wrangler, I can select this noise texture and I can press Control T, and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now I don't need the mapping nodes, so I'm gonna select it and then I'll press X to delete it. And then I wanna use the object coordinates, so I'll plug the object up to the vector on the noise texture. And that way it's gonna place the noise texture on the objects more evenly. And then also I can hold down the Control and Shift key and select different nodes, and that is going to preview the different nodes and that is using the feature from the node wrangler all right so just control shift and select the noise texture to preview it now on the scale here i want to turn this up to like a 15 so it has more detail and then i'm going to turn the detail all the way up to 15 so it's very detailed all right so now what i want to do is i want to plug this into the normal to give it some bump so i'm going to take the factor and let's plug that into the normal and then to convert this to normal data i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to search for a bump node and let's drop the bump node right in here so the factor is 
is going to go into the height and that way it'll convert this black and white data to normal data. So now you can see that is proper normal data. So this is actually data that the principled BSDF can use in the normal. So I can now just control shift and select the principled to preview that. And you can see now that's looking a bit more like bread. Now it's way too strong. So on the strength right here, I'm just going to set this to like a 0.2 on the strength on the bump and that way now it is much more subtle um, but that is looking much more like bread now i want to add another texture so i'm going to take this noise texture and i'll press shift d to duplicate it and let's drop it down here and then i can plug the object up to the vector again so i'm now going to press shift a and i'm going to search for a voronoi texture and let's drop the voronoi down here and then i can control shift and select the voronoi to preview it now what i want to do is i actually want this noise texture to distort the voronoi so this noise texture is going to go through the vector so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color and I'm going to put that into the vector and that way you can see that the noise texture is going to distort the Voronoi so before if I just bring this out you can see we just have these little dots here and it's stretched because the object is stretched but if I take the color and put that into the vector this noise texture is going to distort the Voronoi texture so now you can see it's all warped and it has that really cool texture and it looks kind of like bread but you can see that the texture is way too small right now so I'm going to drag this scale value down on the noise texture and I'm going to make that much bigger um, so something like that so maybe a value of four that works pretty well for me all right now I want this to be going into the bump as well so I'm going to take this bump node and I'll press shift D and shift D is going to duplicate it and I'm going to drop it right here so the normal can go through the normal so we now have this extra height the value that we can add data into so let's take the distance this black and white data on the Voronoi and let's plug that into the height and then I can control shift select this you can see there is the first noise texture but then if I control shift select this you can see we now have another layer of noise and then if I control shift and select the principled BSDF let's just bring the material output back out here you can see we now have this really cool bread texture now to make this look even more like bread I'm gonna add a little bit of subsurf and that way there's just gonna be a little bit of light going through the bread so on the subsurface right here on the principled I'm gonna turn the subsurface to a 0 0.05 and that way if you zoom in here you can see there's just a little bit of light going going through that bread and I'll just make it look a bit more realistic. Now on the subsurface color, I want this to be kind of an orangish, kind of peachy reddish color. And the hex value for this one, if you want to use the same exact color uh, for the subsurface color, the hex value is going to be E7684. So just kind of an orangey reddish color. And you can see now that is looking more like bread. And then bread really isn't that shiny. So on the roughness here, I'm just going to make it a little bit more rough. So I'm going to turn the roughness up to like a 0.63, just so that it's a little bit more rough so that it's not too shiny. All right, there we go. So we now have our hot dog bun. So that's just half of our hot dog bun. So we're going to duplicate this and make the other hot dog bun. So let's go back over here to the layout. And then I need to press Alt H and Alt H is going to unhide everything. So let's select the hot dog bun now and I'll press G to grab. Let's bring this down on the Z axis and I'll just stick it right there on the plate. And then if you need to scale it up, you can. I might just scale it up a little bit, but that is a pretty good size. So I'm now going to press three on the numpad. That's going to go to side view. Let's press G to grab and R to rotate and let's just rotate that over. All right, so we're just going to stick that on the plate and just kind of rotate it. So press three again to go to side view and I can now press shift D to duplicate. I'll press R to rotate and G to grab, and we're just gonna rotate that over, and you can also rotate this over. So basically, we're just gonna stick those together, so just rotate them over on the X axis, and now we have our hot dog bun. So we're now gonna place the hot dog right there. I think I'll rotate it up a little bit more, something like that. All right, let's go into the camera view, and I'm gonna press Z, move my mouse up to go into rendered mode just to preview that, and then we don't need it to render all of this around here. So in the camera view, I can press Control B. So after I press Control B, I can can click and drag and I'm going to drag a box around the camera and that way it's only going to render what's inside the camera so it's only going to render what the camera can see. I can also press Control B if I just want to box select a certain part and if I do that it's going to render faster. If you're using Blender EV though this isn't really going to affect anything um, but for cycles it'll make the render preview faster so we can see how that's looking. And then I do want to make sure that the scale is correct. So what I'm going to do is just select this hot dog here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and bring it over here. And I can press G to grab and bring it down. So as you can see, the plate and the hot dog bun need to be way bigger. So I'm just going to select the hot dog bun, shift select this one and then shift select the plate and I'll press S to scale. We need to make that a bit bigger. 
Um, so something like that is pretty good. Let's go into the camera view, see how that's looking. And I also want to bring the camera out just a little bit so we have a bit more space. So I'm going to click right here on the edge of the camera to select the camera. I can press G to grab and then I can double tap the Z key and I'm just going to bring this out a little bit just so that we have a little bit more space there. So it is a little bit fiddly. You're just going to have to figure out this, what scale works best for you. If you want to, if these are a little bit too big, you could scale them down if you want to. Um, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. So something like that. All right. So that scale is looking pretty good to me. So I've brought the camera out just so that there's a little bit more space there. I've just brought the camera out a bit and then I've just scaled this up. So I can just select this hot dog. I'll press X and delete it um, because that scale looks pretty good. So I can just delete that hot dog. All right, so I'm now gonna be doing the animation for the front conveyor belt. So what I wanna do is I want to parent everything to the plate and then we're gonna animate the plate. So what I'm gonna do is select the conveyor belt and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna shift select both of the hot dog buns. Then I'm gonna hold down the shift key again and just select the plate. So the plate is the last one that's selected. And so you can see that it is yellow. And you can see that there is a yellow outline along the plate because the plate is the last one that's selected, whereas the rest of the objects are orange. So now that that is the last one that's selected, I'm gonna press control P and then I'm gonna parent this to object keep transform so the objects keep their transform. So now that I've done that, if I select the plate, I can just move this and it's gonna move all the other objects. So we can now just animate the plate. All right, so I'm first gonna go here to the timeline and I'm gonna go to frame 180 because I want the plate to start moving at frame 180. So I now just need to add a keyframe right here. So I'm gonna select the plate and I'm gonna press I and that's gonna bring up the keyframe settings and I'm gonna add a location, rotation, and scale. And then on the timeline here on frame 180, you can see there is a diamond there for the keyframe. So I'm now going to move over to frame 200 and 43. So it's right about at the end here, frame 243, and I now want to move the plate over so the conveyor belt is gonna move over. So I'm gonna press G to grab, and I'm gonna bring it over on the x-axis, and then I'm going to type in a value. Now for me, if I type in three, that is a good value. So you can see that most of the hot dog is gone, but you can still see a little bit of the bun in the plate right there. Now you're gonna need to figure out a value that works best for you. So you might need to use like a two, or you might need to use like a 2.5 um, but something that's very important is to make sure that the plate is not overlapping so if I just press the escape T to escape this you can see here is where the plate starts so if I now press G to grab bring it over on the x-axis you can see where my mouse is that is where the starting of the plate is so if I type in two you can see that's going to be overlapping if I type in three that is a good value because the plate is now over and they're not going to be overlapping but at the same time I can still see the plate right there so I'm just going to click to place that and I'm going to move it over to a value of three now the value itself doesn't matter exactly but you do need to type in a specific value because that that way we'll be able to use that value in the future when we're animating this so that the hot dog bun is at the same exact location as the other hot dog bun. So that works well for me, just moving it over by a value of three, so I can still see it in the camera's perspective, but it's not gonna overlap the other plate. So I'm now gonna press I, and we want to insert another location, rotation, and scale. So now if I move back, you can see that the conveyor belt is moving that over. Let's press Control S again to save. So now what I want to do is I want to duplicate these objects and I want to put them over here and then that way when this moves back they're going to be over here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back to frame 180. So I'm now going to select these objects. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all these three objects and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and then I'm going to press the escape key so that they hop back to their default position. I'm now going to press alt P and I want to clear the parent and keep the transform and that way it's not going to be parented to everything but it's going to keep the the transform so it's going to stay where it is in the 3d space so i'm going to hit alt p and then i will clear and keep the transform so now if i move this you can see it's moving over now there is a problem with this the duplicated plate is also moving over and that is because it has keyframes so i just need to double tap the a key right here to select everything in the timeline and i'm going to press x to delete and i'm going to delete the keyframes that way now i can move this over and you can see this first plate is moving over and this is the main plate and then here is our duplicated objects so i'm now going to move over all the way to the end to frame 250 and i now want to parent all these objects to this plate here this is the original plate that is moving everything else so i'm going to hold down the shift key and select this object and you can see this 
this is the one with the keyframes. So now that this is the last object that's selected, I'm going to press Control P and I'm going to set parent to object. And again, I want to keep the transform so these objects stay where they are. So now if I move these back, you can see that that's being moved over. And so now we have that one right there. And that is going to be at the exact same location because it's moved over at the exact same amount. So you can see that I can move this over and then I can move that back. And this one is going to be exactly where this one is. So I just want to do the same exact thing, but move it over here. So this is really easy to do. What I'm going to do is just move back over here. I'm going to go to frame 250 and I'm just going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to select these three objects. So hold down the shift key, select these three objects. I'm now going to press shift D to duplicate. And then I'm going to press the escape key so it hops back to the default position. Now again, I need to delete the keyframes so that this object doesn't move. So I'm going to press the A key to select these keyframes right here. And I'll press X to delete and I'll delete the keyframes. Now the other thing that I need to do is I need to unparent these objects so they don't get pulled along with the other objects. So I'm going to press Alt P and I want to clear and keep the transform. Now if I move this back, you can see that this object is separate and so it's not going to be moving with the other objects. So I'm now just going to move back here to like a frame 140 and I now want to parent these objects to this plate so that it moves along with the plate. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this plate last and then this is the one with the animation. So I'm now going to press control P and I want to set parent to object keep transform. So now if I move this you can see that all of these are at the exact same position. So when I move this over this one right here is going to be at the exact same position where this is. And that way the end frame and the start frame are going to look exactly the same. Now I just need to do that one more time so that when this moves over, there'll be one more plate right here. So we're going to do the same exact thing. So I'm going to select this object and then hold the shift key and select these objects and make sure this is like back here at frame 150 so that this object is actually over here. So again, I'll press shift D to duplicate it. I'll press escape to clear that movement. And then I want to press alt P and I'm going to clear and keep the transform. And then this doesn't have any keyframes on it. So I don't need to delete the keyframes. So now what I'm going to do is move over to frame 250 and you can see we've moved that over. So I'm now going to hold down the shift key, make sure these are still selected and hold down the shift key. And lastly, select this object. This is the main plate object with the keyframes. And then make sure this is selected last because it has the yellow outline. So I can now press control P and we want to set parent to object keep transform and that way it'll keep its transform. So now if I move through this, you can see it's staying at the exact same spot. So when I move this over, it's going to be at the same exact location. So basically when I move this over, this hot dog right here, this hot dog bun is going to replace the location of this hot dog bun and it's going to do that for each one. So that way it'll be a looping animation. So if you actually play through this, you can press the space bar to play. If you zoom in here, you can just click right here at the end at frame 250. You can see this one is actually a different one from this one. And this one is different from this one. But if you play through this, if you look closely, you're not actually able to see any difference because they're at the exact same spot in the 3D space. And so that is how we're going to get that looping effect. All right, so let's press Control S again to save, and it is now time to animate the claw. So we're gonna start at frame one. So let's move over to frame one, just move this to frame one. You can also click right here and type in one to move it over to frame one. So we are gonna animate the claw right here. So the claw is gonna start right above the hot dog bun, and it's gonna be holding a hot dog, and we're gonna bring it down. It's gonna drop the hot dog in there, and then it's gonna move over and grab the next hot dog. So what I need to do first is scale this way down. So I'm going to select the main controller object. I'll press S to scale. We'll scale that way down. And then I can press G and Z and we are going to bring that down. Um, so it's much smaller. Let's press zero on the numpad so we can see how big that is. And I do need to scale it down quite a bit smaller um, because that is too big. So I'm going to scale that down even more and let's bring it down. Um, so a size like that is pretty good. Maybe just make it a little bit smaller, um, but that is a pretty good size. And also, you can make sure that it's in the very center. So I'm going to press seven on the numpad for top view and you can press G to grab and let's bring this over on the X axis. And I want this to be about in the very center there. So when it places the hot dog, it'll be about in the very center. Um, and a size like that is pretty good. You can change the size as needed. Maybe I'll just make it a tiny bit smaller, um, but that is looking pretty good. And I am actually going to select this controller object and move it slightly over. And that way there's just going to be a little bit of space here for the other robotic arm. So it'll be just a little bit over like that. So I now need to duplicate one of the hot dogs and put the hot dog in the robotic claw. So I'm going to take this hot dog right here. I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. Let's bring it over on the Y axis. And then I can press seven on the numpad and let's bring it over here. So it's in the very center, maybe just slightly farther back but pretty much in the very center. So if you press seven on the numpad for top view, you can get that 
in the location that you want. So about like that. And then let's just go to the camera view, see how that's looking, bring that down. That's looking pretty good. So I can press G to grab. Let's bring it up on the Z axis and I'm going to stick it right inside that claw hand. So if you need to move the claw, you can select the main object right up here, which controls the claw and you can press G to grab. And when I press G to grab, I'm holding down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive. You can also press three on the numpad to go to side view and just kind of move that to wherever it looks good. All right. That's looking pretty good. So I now need to uh, actually make the claw clamp around the hot dog. So I'm going to just select these objects and I'll press R to rotate. And I'm just going to rotate these over so that it's fully grabbing the hot dog. Now, something that's really important is that we unparent this object because you can see there's a little dot right there, a little dotted line. And that is telling us that it's parented to the main object, um, which is this object. You can see if I move this object, this hot dog is going to move along with it. So I just need to unparent this object. So I'm going to select this hot dog and I'll press Alt P and we want to clear and keep the transform. That way it's going to stay exactly where it is, but it'll clear the parent. So now if I move this object, you can see it's not going to move the hot dog and that dot line isn't there. All right, let's press control S again to save and let's start animating. So I'm going to go to frame one and I'm going to select this object right here. And I want to add a keyframe right here. So I'm going to press the I key and I'm going to do the location, rotation and scale to add a keyframe there. So now what I'm going to do is move over to frame 25. So move to frame 25 and I want to bring this down. And if you wanted to, you could turn on the auto key so that it automatically adds keyframes, but we don't actually have that many keyframes and so I'm going to do it manually just because I find that's a little bit easier um, just for something like this because we don't have that much keyframes to add. And then the other really important thing is to make sure the hot dog has a keyframe as well. So if I move this object, we're not going to parent the hot dog to this object because this object does need to move separately when it moves along. So I need to add a keyframe here. So I'm going to click on the hot dog and I'm going to press I to insert a keyframe. Let's click on the location, rotation, and scale. So now both of these objects have those keyframes. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select both of these objects. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frame 25. So frame 25, and I now want to move these down. Now you could turn on the auto key feature if you want to, but we don't have that many keyframes. And so I find that it's just a little bit more easy just to manually add keyframes in this case, but you could turn on the auto key if you want to, and that will automatically add keyframes. I'm going to press G to grab. We're going to bring this down on the Z axis. And again, make sure both of these objects are selected. And I'm going to bring this down pretty far, um, but not too far because you can see the claw hand is kind of going through the hot dog button. So I'm just going to bring this down kind of about that far and we will have the hot dog kind of fall down into the hot dog bun when the claw hand opens up. So just about that far, that is pretty good. Maybe just bring it slightly more up, um, but something like that is pretty good. So now make sure both of these objects are selected. I'm going to press I and then again, I'm going to insert a location, rotation and scale. So if you click on both of these objects, just make sure that they both have keyframes there. And you can see because we had them both selected, it added keyframes for both of them. So now these are moving at exactly the same position at exactly the same speed. So it looks like the claw hand is grabbing the hot dog and moving it down. So I now want everything to just stay exactly where it is for just a few frames. So I'm going to move over to frame 37. So I want to add another keyframe right here. So what I can do is I can just press I and again, we want to insert location, rotation, and scale. And you can see that it has that orange line there. And that is telling us that nothing is changing between the two keyframes. So it's exactly the same. Now in this spot right here, I want the claw hand to open up. So I'm going to go back to frame 25 and then I'm going to zoom in here and I want to add keyframes to all of the claws. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and add keyframes right there. So I want to add a keyframe on all these objects at frame 25. So I'm going to press I and I'm going to insert location, rotation and scale. So now we've added a keyframe there. And then again, I'm going to move back to frame 37 and at frame 37, the claw hands are going to open up. So now what I can do is I can actually turn on the auto key for this. That'll just make things a little bit easier. So I can now just select these and rotate them. And I'm going to rotate these over and rotate this over as well. And because I have the auto key on, it's automatically going to add keyframes. So I'm just going to open up the claw hand. I don't mind that it goes through a little bit because you're not really going to be able to see it very well. You can't really see the claw hand going through the hot dog bun. So I'm just going to move that out a little bit. Now, as it opens up, the hot dog is going to need to fall down. So I'm going to select the hot dog and we've already added keyframes here. So I'm just going to go to frame 37 and then I'm going to override the keyframe. And remember, we do have the auto key on, so it's going to automatically add keyframes if we move it. So go to frame 37. I'm going to press G to grab and I'm going to bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it right down here. So it just goes down there into the hot dog bun 
All right, that's looking pretty good. That might be a little bit too far down. Just bring it up a little bit. So now if you go back and forth, let me just select the hot dog between frame 25 and 37. You can see the claw hand opens up and the hot dog goes down. Now there is a problem here. You can see that the hot dog starts to move down even before the claw hand starts to open. And so an easy way to fix that is to just add another keyframe and make the hot dog so it doesn't fall quite as quickly. So I'm going to move over to frame 29. And then what I want to do is just select this keyframe right here. So just make sure the hot dog is selected. We're going to select the keyframe on frame 25 and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to bring this keyframe over that way from frame 25 to frame 29 the hot dog isn't going to move and it'll give time for the claw hand to start to open and then from frame 29 to frame 37 the hot dog is going to fall down and that just looks a bit more realistic because it would need time for the claw hand to open up before the hot dog falls down so that's looking really good let's just press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and we can just kind of play that and see how that's looking so you can see now let's just go to frame one and just watch the whole thing Thing. So it moves down and then it opens up and the hot dog falls into the hot dog bun. So that's looking really good. Let's press control S again to save. All right. So we're now going to select the claw hand, the top of the claw hand, and we're going to make the claw move back up. So we're going to go to frame 37 and that is where we want the claw hand to start moving back up and I want to move it back up so it's at the same location. So we can actually go back here and you can see that on frame one it was back up here. So I can actually just select this keyframe and let's also turn off the auto key so that we don't accidentally add keyframes where we don't want them. So I'm going to go back to frame one and select this keyframe and I can press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to move this over to frame 52. So you can press a G to grab and I'm going to move this over to frame 52. So now from frame 37 to 52 you can see that the claw hand moves back up so let's just play it through this so it goes down drops the hot dog and then moves back up and at frame 52 it's moved back up so i'm now going to move over to frame 76 and at frame 76 i want the claw hand to move over and i want to move it over the hot dog so it can grab the next hot dog so go to frame 76 and i'm going to press 7 on the numpad to go to top view so i can press g to grab and i'm going to move this over and i'm going to move it to about here we can move it around later if we need to and i'm going to press I and then we're going to insert a location rotation and scale so that way from frame 52 to frame 76 it moves over now I'm moving it over here because I know the hot dog is going to move a bit more forward so I'm going to move over forward just to see where that is and I'm going to press 7 on the numpad again to go to top view and you can see that that isn't really correct because it's too far over this way so what I can do is I can just click on this keyframe right here make sure the claw hand is selected I'm going to move this over to like frame 130 or just move it over to the hot dog has moved over and I can now just replace the keyframe so I'm just going to turn on the auto key just click on that button to turn on the auto key and I'm going to now move this over and I'm going to stick it about here all right so something that's really important is that the very end frame is the exact same as the very start frame and so the easiest way to do this is to sort of animate the arm grabbing the hot dog backwards so at the very starting we're going to have this right here and it's going to be grabbing the hot dog and then it's moving down at the very end though we need this to grab the hot dog and we need to move it back to the same exact location so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move back over to frame one and then i want to select this hot dog and i want to duplicate this hot dog so it's in the same exact location so i'm going to press shift d to duplicate and then i'm going to press the escape key code so it goes back to the default position and then also i want to turn off the auto key so i don't accidentally add keyframes so i'm now going to double tap the a key to to select everything and I'll press X to delete and I want to delete all of those keyframes on this hot dog. So now if I move this you can see the hot dog is separate and it's not moving. So I'm now going to move over to frame 237. So where you can just type in 237 right here on this little uh, value or you can also go to frame 237. So I now want to add a keyframe right here and that way this second hot dog is going to be at the exact same position as the first hot dog. So I'm going to press I and then I'm going to insert a location rotation scale on this second hot dog at frame 237 so now you can see that this hot dog is at the exact same position at the end as this hot dog is at the starting so I now need to move the claw arm so that the claw arm is at the exact same position as well so what I'm gonna do is select the claw arm and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna shift select all the pieces and why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure I get all the keyframes at frame one so I'm gonna select all the pieces of the claw arm and move 
move to frame one. So I'm now going to press B for the box select, and I'm going to box select all the keyframes on the claw arm which are on frame one. And I want the claw arm to be at the exact same position from the starting to the ending. So I'm now going to press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to bring these all the way over, and then I'm going to move over. And again, I want to go to frame 237. So I'm going to press G to grab, and I'm going to move this over. That way, this hot dog and this claw arm are going to have keyframes at frame 237. And so now if you play through this, you can see it there at the exact same location. Now you can see that the actual claw gets moved because if I go to the start frame and the end frame, you can see it's moved. And that is because we just need to duplicate those keyframes over. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm just going to select all of these four claws. So all those four claw pieces. I'm now going to move back over to here to frame 25. And that is where the keyframe is set. So I'm going to press B for the box select and just box select that right there. So we want to box select all those keyframes and then I'll press shift D to duplicate and we're going to bring this all the way over. And again, I want to move over to exactly 237 because that's where I'm adding all of the ending keyframes. So I'll press G to grab and we're going to move this over here. And now you can see if I play through this, it's at the exact same location. So I can just press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. And you can see if I play this, the start frame and the end frame are at the exact same position. And so that way it'll be a looping animation. So let's just press control S again to save. And now, as I talked about a little bit earlier, we're going to animate this moving backwards. So we're going to animate it from the end here and we're going to move it back. And that way the hot dog will be at the exact same location. So to do this, I'm going to select this object right here and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the hot dog. So I now want to turn on the auto key just so that it automatically adds keyframes. And then just to make sure these both have keyframes on 237, make sure you go over to frame 237 with these objects selected. I'm going to press I and let's insert location, rotation, and scale. All right, so now I want to move over to frame 191. And on frame 191, I want these objects to be moved over. So what I first want to do is I want to actually select this keyframe here. I'm going to press B for the box select, select both of these. I'll press Shift D to duplicate, and we're going to put this over at frame 191 so it doesn't move. So now I can press 7 on the numpad for top view, and I'm going to move this over as close as I can so that this hot dog is above this hot dog. So go to frame 191, make sure both of these objects are selected, these two objects. And then if you press 7 for top view, I can press G to grab and we are going to stick these right here and because the auto key is on it's going to override those keyframes and just make it pretty close we are going to be deleting these hot dogs because we want this hot dog to be at the exact same location so we actually will be deleting these hot dogs and using this hot dog instead um, but we'll do that later on so just press G to grab make sure that is about the same so it's going to be right there and make sure that looks good in the camera's perspective so now you can see from frame 237 to frame 191 it moves over over. And then earlier in this video, we did animate the claw hand moving over at frame 176, but we actually want to override that because we now have a new position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object right here, the main controller, and then I'm going to select this keyframe on frame 191. I can now press Shift D to duplicate, and then I can move over, and I'm going to drop it right here to override this keyframe on frame 176. So you can see now that doesn't move at all, but then we will add keyframes right in here to have it move up and down. So I'm now going to move over to frame 188 and it's really important that you select this piece right here that's going to move the claw but then also shift and select the hot dog so at frame 188 I want it to be exactly where it is so what I can do is I can just press I and we want to insert a location rotation and scale and that way from frame 191 to frame 188 it's going to stay exactly where it is so I'm now going to move over to frame 155 so right here frame 155 so I'm going to select this hot dog right here and we actually don't need this anymore because this hot dog is going to replace it. So I can press X to delete and we just want to delete that hot dog. So now again, select the controller of the robot claw and then also hold down the shift key and select this hot dog and make sure you're on frame 155. So I can now press G to grab. Let's bring it down on the Z axis and we're going to stick it right here. You can also press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to bring it down on the Z axis and just place it so that it's nicely placed on the hot dog holder. So something like that is pretty good. So now if you go back here, you can see from frame 188 to frame 155, it moves down. And again, we have the auto key on, so it's automatically adding a keyframe there. 
So I'm now going to move over to frame 143. And at frame 143, I want this to not move, so I don't want the arm or the hot dog to move at all. So I'm going to press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select these keyframes and make sure that these are both selected. And I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to move these over to frame 143. And you can now see that it has that orange line there, and that's telling it that it's not moving. There's nothing changing in between these keyframes. So frame 155 to frame 143, it's not going to move. All right, so now let's go back here just to like frame 115 and we're going to play this. So what I want to do from here to about here is I want the claw hand to start to close. So as the claw is moving down, we're going to animate the claw arms closing. So to do this, I'm going to move to frame 135. And at frame 135, we're going to have the claw hands start to close. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select all of the claw pieces. And then what I want to do is I want to add a keyframe here and I want it to be exactly the same so that it's not moving. So again, what I'm going to do is press B for the box select and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to box select that keyframe right there. And I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate and I'm going to move this over and I'm going to stick that keyframe at frame 135. So the actual claw is not moving from here, frame 37, all the way to 135. So I'm now going to move over to frame 155. And so from frame 135 to 155, I want the hands to actually close. I want the claw to close on the hot dog. Now it's really important that I use the exact same keyframes because again, we want this to be a looping animation. So if I just close it, it's not going to be closed at the exact same position. So you can see if I move over here, if I move over to frame 237, you can see the claw hand is closed around the hot dog. So I need to hold down the shift key and I need to shift select all of those four claw objects and I need to now just move this keyframe over to frame 155 so that it's closed at the exact same position. So I'm going to press A to deselect everything in the timeline and I'm going to press B for the box select and just box select all these keyframes. Make sure that the four objects here are selected and make sure that this is selected on frame 237. So I'm now going to move back to frame 155. So move back over here to frame 155. So I'm now going to press Shift D to duplicate, and let's bring this over, and I want to click to place it right there. So now you can see that it closes, the claw hand closes from 135 to 155, and it's at the exact same position. So it's closed at the exact same amount, and that is exactly what we want. So let's just turn off the auto key just so that we're not going to accidentally add any keyframes. So I can now just play through this and see how it's looking. So you can see that it drops the hot dog down, and then it comes up, and then it goes over, and then it comes down here to grab the next hot dog. And you can see we animated that, so it grabs the hot dog, brings it up, because we animated it backwards. So it grabs the hot dog, brings it up, and then it moves right over there to the exact same position. So if you click right here as it's playing, if you click on the ending keyframe, you can see that it's at the exact same spot. If you just look at the hot dog and look at the claw arm, you can see it's the exact same position. Now if you go right back over here to the starting keyframe, you can see that we don't actually need this hot dog um, for a few reasons. One reason is that if I move this over, you can see that there's actually not supposed to be a hot dog there because the hot dogs start over here and as they move the claw hand grabs each hot dog in the looping animation so we don't actually need that hot dog right there. So I just put that there just for reference earlier on in this tutorial but I can just now select this hot dog let's press x and we're going to delete it and then I can press ctrl s again to save. So we still need to animate this hot dog being moved along with the conveyor belt um, but that's not too hard to do and I'm going to save that for the next part because this part has already been going on for quite a long time so in part two of the tutorial series, we're going to be doing a bunch more of the animation. So I hope you've been enjoying this tutorial and I hope you've been able to follow along and thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy watching these tutorials, then you can definitely consider checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page. And those are great ways to help support me and my YouTube channel so I can continue to make free tutorials. So to watch part two, I'll have part two right up there on the end screen and also the link in the video description when it's released. I'll be uploading one part each day until all the parts are released. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next part, part two.